Good morning. Good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. 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 Now, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but it's Lord's Day, no matter what other day we might celebrate. Amen. 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 I just want you to know that this morning, as we prepare to worship God, let us remember that each day is a blessing. Each day is a time in which we can say to God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings of this day. And whatever you have in store for me, this day is a day that is super because you have allowed me to be a part of it. We'll now have our announcements by Kathy. Good morning, Holder State family. Good morning. Good morning. And Sunday and almost Valentine's Day. So, um, don't you just love Pastor Burke's big bag? What do you call that? Stole. A stole. A stole. And, and, you know, isn't he lucky that his team is called the Saints? I know, right? It just seems very appropriate. And so, I apologize for not wearing any uh, paraphernalia. I have borrowed a Baltimore Ravens hat for my brother and I even lost it on a walk. So now it's not so super, you know, Sunday and day because now I'm out um, for the ice of a beat at a Baltimore Ravens meeting. So uh, I always see something more Ravens and take my eyes out <laughs> for the loss. Um, but we do have some heartfelt news today. Um, it is almost Neil Lindley and Marguerite Lindley's anniversary. They almost made it to Valentine's Day. <laughs> February 15th marks their uh, anniversary. How many years? 20. <laughs> <laughs> Journey. And uh, Healthy Journey. 
Charity's objective, I understand, is through Christ's love to provide support and education for mothers to be and their children. And I believe that Healthy Journey is particularly focused on helping um, those uh, mothers to be or mothers with children who uh, maybe suffer some domestic violence or have you know, some financial ch uh, challenges or other challenges. So, um, what uh, you know, we'd like to do at this point is ask Anna Lee to come forward and share a little bit about the wonderful work that her nonprofit is doing. together with 
basic necessities, if you will, diapers, wipes, blankets, pacifier, bottles. Formula is tricky because of allergies, but have those things on hand. So when moms come and say they, you know, need some help or you know, need to get started, we'll have those things to get to them. In the future, what we're working towards is we'd like to have a home where these moms can live. And once the baby is born, if they have a job, we'll provide childcare and they can stay for a year and try to get, you know, themselves established and get on their feet a little bit. So that's our ultimate goal. Um, what I teach with kind of tying it into Valentine's Day, I teach preschool and I do a letter, just a verse for each letter. And one of the, I'm just going to tell you a few. This one is not, but with Valentine's Day, God is love. So in my preschool, we talk for G that we're created in God's image. K is to try to always be kind to everybody to the best that you can. L, love is kind. So if you tie in all that, then God wants us to be in his image. He wants us to love one another in kindness. Yeah. And that's pretty much what Healthy Journey is trying to do. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I've got just a little side note here. When it comes to our spiritual life, and plan, God's plans for us, we will not end in failure. The project will be finished. The promise will be kept. The dream will be realized in living color. Why? Because it's God work, God's work, God's project, and he will do it. A promise is only as reliable as the one who makes it. This promise in Philippians 1, 6 is made by the heavenly promise keeper, God himself. He always keeps his promises. Amen. So however far he leads us is however far we'll go. And all praise and honor goes to him. I know that many of you know I love Priscilla Shire. So in closing, I'm just going to say one little thing from her. God has a sovereign plan, and you are a part of it. If you'll trust him, accepting what you can't understand, you'll see he has only diverted you onto the center stage of his will. Amen. So in closing, I just will cover y'all's prayers that you give, that God gives us wisdom, and that we hear what he has to say, never forsaking, it's all for him, that we try to help someone else. So that's a little bit about what Healthy Journey does. And in honor of Super Bowl, I have a little gift. I'm going to give out to just a few people. Happy Super Bowl. Oh, thank you. Aww. Only because I have just a few. <laughs> Happy Super Bowl. Thank you. Good job. Audit says Healthy Journey. Um, it's just handwritten because I just got the idea last week. Nothing printed fancy, but our phone number. So if you know of anybody that can use our services, please um, have them give us a call. Thank you, Anna Lee. We asked Anna Lee to uh, speak to you because um, we are a little church that can, and we do, and we've done quite a few um, initiatives with the Mission, uh, Salvation Army, and uh, Lines for the Homeless. And so we have someone in our midst who operates a, a nonprofit with you know, this very worthy objective. So we want to look ahead in the future to what we can do and how we can partner with a healthy uh, journey to make a difference in our, in our community. Um, Anna Lee uh, focused on the big picture. Um, she did speak to us at um, the administrative board meeting and some of the needs that her organization does have, you know, um, include, they, they, you know, as you can guess, a, a nonprofit needs liability insurance and um, they need a, a website. Uh, I think that they have a website up and running, but they could always use some help in, you know, refining that website. Um, so we wanted to hear from her and wanted you to get uh, familiar with so as we move ahead and partner with them, we can support them. Next Sunday, we are going to have a second collection plate for those who want to contribute financially to um, Healthy Journey. And as she asked, please keep, uh, keep her organization in her prayers, in our prayers. So uh, thank you again, Anna, for that. And now if we can bow our heads so we can pray over today's uh, service. You remind us always that we need to have a heart for you, and a heart for you means having a heart for others. Lord, bless this church. Bless the people in it. 
with um, Lifter Morrison's thing, that beautiful African American national anthem, which these two brothers, James Wilkin Johnson and John Roseman Johnson, wrote. I was not clear that James Wilkin Johnson, the famed American writer and poet, wrote the lyrics. His brother, a classically trained musician, John Roseman, wrote the music. Okay, Harlem Renaissance period. I'll tell you about that later on this month. Thank you. Let's stand, please, and sing, I will trust in the Lord. Sing it only if you're going to do that. If you're going to trust him, let's sing it. <laughs>
he heard that probably many times over. That melody was later attributed to what we now know as amazing grace. It was only after experiencing a violent near-death experience <laughs> that Captain John Newton finally converted to Christianity. But he continued to be a captain of slave ships. He continued to invest in the slave trade. Did I say Christianity? Pastor, you know, everybody claims to be a Christian. It was in 1764 that the Church of England ordained John Newton after he had retired as a seaman. They ordained him as an Anglican parish priest. 1764. He remained in this capacity for about 20 years. In 1772, eight years after he was ordained, Newton penned the words to a sermon titled, Face Review and Expectation. Face Review and Expectation was published seven years later, in 1779. It was a sermon, it didn't have music. But later it became known as Amazing Grace. And music was, the unknown melody was added to this song. Now when I say he was ordained in 1764, he wrote the sermon in 1772, but he did not, according to the records, I did my research, it was not until 1788 that John Newton finally renounced slavery and became an abolitionist. He wrote a pamphlet titled Thoughts Upon the African Slave Trade. He began with an apology for his part in the slave trade and he described what he witnessed and heard. What he witnessed and heard during his time as a slave trader on a slave ship as captain. Hence we have what is called a white spiritual, written by a white person, but the melody is the slave scale. Put the two together, and you have a white spiritual. Praise God, Negro spiritual, white spiritual, nothing wrong with that. Before his death, John Newton wrote two other uh, hymns, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I am, I'm a musician. Uh, How Sweet the Name of Jesus. I know that, do you know that? He died. December 21, 1807, he was 82 years old. Now, Amazing Grace has four stanzas. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the first hour, no, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. So it's grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. The fourth stanza that John Newton did not write it was Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote, When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. She added this to Amazing Grace, and she put this song in her novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. In closing, Amazing Grace has three spiritual messages. The first one, forgiveness. Yes, John Newton, I and my four parents forgive you for what you did. Why? Because all of us need forgiveness. Not one of us is without sin. We all need forgiveness. Number two, redemption. We all need the blood of Christ to be purchased again to see glory. Without being redeemed, there's no hope. We all need that. And the third message in this beautiful hymn, mercy from God. All of us need mercy from God. Thank you. Amen.
just from the fountain, Lord. Just come from the fountain. His name is so good. Oh, Lord, I just come from the fountain. I'm just from the fountain, Lord. Just come from the fountain. His name is so good. Oh, brother, do you love Jesus? Yes, yes, I do love Jesus. Oh, brother, do you love Jesus? His name's so sweet. Oh, Lord, I just, just come from the fountain. I'm just from the fountain, Lord. I just come from the fountain. His name's so sweet. Oh, sister, do you love Jesus? Sister, do you love Jesus? Is his name so good? Oh, Lord, I just come from the fountain. I'm just from the fountain, Lord. Just come from the fountain. His name so sweet. Oh, sinner, do you love Jesus? have seen him go 
into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, this morning, as we celebrate a day in which we celebrate teams and celebrate accomplishments on the gridiron, more importantly than that, throughout all of eternity, is the celebration of your love for us. And that love is shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us come to appreciate, when we use the word super, what it truly means. Let us understand fully that as we call things super, that we're putting them in the proper context. And let us realize that though we may overuse this term, when we finally fully understand what it truly means to be super, let us share it everywhere we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, we We sometimes don't have the luxury of silencing our phones. I actually have a friend from a previous church calling me right now. <laughs> I will ignore the call, but I will have to call her back. I used to call her Moses because she always had her staff with her when she went somewhere. So, I, and she may keep calling. I hope she doesn't. But, <laughs> but it just caught me off guard. I'm sorry, but I just had to share that because you might hear the buzzing on the, on the lecture. But anyway, I just wanted you to know that even though things come about sometimes that are so unexpected, it's, it's all in fun and it's all to enjoy that um, things as we, as we see them happen sometimes are a little bit unexpected, but let's enjoy it and laugh at ourselves and keep moving. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wait till she finds out that she interrupted the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be mortified. <laughs> So, as you've heard the title and you've seen it read, I want you to realize that we use the term super way too much. So I want us to truly be careful of what we call super. All right. So, what do you consult, consult, consider super? What do you call super? Just share some things that you call super. Of course, today. Oh, okay. All right. Big super. You're not going to live that one down. That was good. I was wondering if it was going to come up. Chocolate. Chocolate? Okay. All right. A birdie. A birdie. Oh, no. Okay. What about a hole in one? I had one. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, oh, yeah. all right, yeah, right. yeah. Anything else? Right. Yes, amen, amen. What about in sports since today is Super Bowl Sunday? Come on, help me out. Yay. That's a given. <laughs> a three-pointer. A three-pointer, okay. What about a four-pointer? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Super Bowl Sunday, for example. So which, which Super Bowl is the best one? Third one, which was what? Ice Bowl? Was that the third one or the second one? I think it was the second one. Where Green Bay and Dallas played uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, on a field that was so frozen that I think it was like minus 13 degrees there, plus the windshield factor. It was beyond, they couldn't even really touch and feel the ball, it was so cold. What about other Super Bowls? What about the commercials? Come on. All those commercials, they have gotten to be so good that I watch that sometimes if I don't like the team, more so than the game. Yeah. What about the World Series? Now, I know we don't call it Super, but what about the fact that it's the World Series? It's the game that uh, the major uh, National League and the American League play to declare who's the winner of the whole uh, Major League Baseball. What about the NBA uh, National Championship, or whatever they call it? <laughs> what about food? Mm -hmm. What foods do we call super? Or do we call any of them super? Mm -hmm. 
If you tell me that I'm going to eat some seafood pretty soon, okay, that's just a good <laughs> What about the, uh, the restaurants they used to call super size or biggie size or, or extra large? You remember when they used to call something, I'm, I want to super size it? Yeah. Yeah. So how much more food are you going to get with that super size? <laughs> Do you all remember Super Lube? You know, there was Jiffy Lube and Quick Lube and all these others, but when Super Lube came out, that's the one I went to. They did a good job. They got you out quickly. And I rarely had to worry about was my oil truly changed and was everything else that was supposed to be right with the car was right. What about, now we're talking about things that are a little bit more uh, tragic. What about World War I, which was called the War to End All Wars? And within less than 20 years, World War II. Yeah. So what happened to that war being the world, the war to end our war? What about the Persian Gulf War, which was considered the battle, the mother of all battles, I've heard it called a few times. So we kept going and adding things that were supposedly the, the worst or the biggest or the whatever. What about comics? Superman. The Man of Steel, mm -hmm. Clark Kent. But of course, that's just the comic strip. But what I really want us to understand is what about from God's perspective? What does God call super? <coughs> I, would, I would suggest that Jesus is the real Superman. Amen. No matter what else and who else you think is superb or super or excellent or perfect, Jesus is the real Superman. Amen. And if we look at the scripture that we just heard, Jesus' ascension was super. It was, it was all of these accolades and so many more. It was wonderful. It was, it was miraculous. It was splendid. It was fantastic. It was marvelous. It was tremendous. It was stupendous. It was also scary because the disciples did not understand what they truly were witnessing. And from the scripture it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. After his resurrection, which was already something beyond imagination, Christ ascended to heaven to resume his place in glory. So, surprise upon surprise, they thought our Savior the one we've been following, the teacher, our rabbi, he's dead, he's gone. But once he was resurrected, that was already beyond comprehension. Then he stays with them for 40 days. And then he goes back to the place that he truly resides. Mm -hmm. They couldn't handle much more than this. Mm. They were so in awe and so concerned at the same time. Wait, where is Jesus going? Why is he leaving us? He had to. He had to begin his high priestly ministry in heaven for the believers of his ministry. For those who were going to follow him, not only for a period of time, but throughout the ages. Because of their beliefs and because of what they taught, we continue to be called Christians because of the lessons that Christ shared with them and they wrote and shared with all of us. That is super. Because 20 centuries later plus, 2 billion people plus, and throughout that age, we still are sharing the same stories about how Christ came in the form of a babe and lived and dwelt among and died and was resurrected. The death could have been the end. Yeah. And we would have called him Mohammed mm. or Buddha mm. or someone. But because of his resurrection, yes, that's what makes him different from any of the other religions and belief systems that we have on earth. Mm -hmm. Because of that resurrection, we might not want to use the word super. We want to call it miraculous or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But it is an amazing grace, as the song said. It's an amazing ability to see that the one who died, came out of the grave, was resurrected, 
and was ascended to heaven. Yes. That we may have an advocate with the Father. That we may have someone who continues to speak on our behalf as we go through life. Mm -hmm. That is soon. Mm -hmm. The disciples, they didn't understand what this event signified at first. It was confusing and, and they wanted their heaven on earth right now. They were thinking, as the scripture shared, wait, aren't you going to change things right now? Aren't we not going to have to be slaves to the Roman Empire anymore? Isn't Israel going to take over because you are our God, our Lord, our Savior? Because you are the one who's going to knock everything on its head and change things for our better. Mm -hmm. This is what the disciples thought. But, but Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, had other ideas. They weren't just trying to save one group of people. They were trying to save their creation. They were trying to save every person that had ever lived and ever would live through the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. They were thinking of only their own, only their own kind, only their own nationality, only their own belief system. But Christ came to save not only the Jews, but the Gentiles as well. Amen. We as Christians, I say hopefully we understand. And when we understand, we begin to look forward to Christ's return. They asked Jesus, what are you going to do? Are you going to save this country now? Are you going to save the nation Israel now? Are you going to take us out of the hands of the Roman Empire. And Jesus had a better answer than what they considered a great answer, a super answer. The next part of the scripture says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The disciples were concerned with the world evangelism and discipleship. We are a part of the ends of the earth that Christ was sharing with them. They were to start sharing their message in Jerusalem. And then in all of Judea and in Samaria. Well, Aldersgate in Norfolk, we are part of that ends of the earth. We are a part of the people centuries later, thousands of miles away from the origin story of the resurrection and the ascension. And we are able to share in this place, in this community, what Christ shared with his disciples over 2,000 years ago. That great commission that Christ gave them still applies today. This was no ordinary power that Christ was sharing with them. It was superpower. And as he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And as we see later in the book of Acts, Peter, even in the next chapter, chapter 2, he says, repent and be baptized on the day of Pentecost. And he was sharing with thousands of people, and over 3,000 people became a part of the body of Christ that day. That's super. We have access to this power this very day. But the question is, are we using it? Are we using and allowing the Spirit of God to rule within us and to be shared with others around us? While they beheld what was happening, the disciples were watching Christ rise. Mm -hmm. And these two men suddenly appeared to them. And they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Christ would no longer physically appear to them. But as he told them, he would leave them an advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the one who continues to guide this very moment. The one who allows for us to know that God is with us, never leaving us and never forsaking us. Mm -hmm. So though they never would see him physically again in their lifetime, he was leaving them the ability to know that he was with them always, as he said in Matthew 28. 19 and 20. 
I will be with you to the end of the age. So let's look at forward from that statement and let's look at where we will see Christ next at his second coming. Peter, uh, Paul shares with us in 1 Thessalonians this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So our scriptures share with us that though Christ ascended physically to heaven, he left us someone who would guide us, who would nurture us, who would care for us, who would lift us up in those moments when we find ourselves down, who would share all that he had, the power of God through the Holy Spirit. It is powerful that Christ has given believers like you and me the strength and the power equal to the trials and to the, the things that we see going on around us and to the service that we share around our community. He has given us the power that we have access to, to share in a community, to be able to be beacons of light, beacons of hope to this lost world, to this world that, if you think about it, you cringe every time you see the news coming on because you know there's going to be another shooting. You just don't know where it is. Every time we hear something on the news, we start to wonder. We start to hope God is coming, right? God is where he's supposed to be. But we are also where we're supposed to be. Sharing the message, the love that God has given all of us, that we may share it with others, so that they may have the same hope that we have, that this Superman, this Christ that we love and who loves us, will be able to bring them out of whatever challenges that they find themselves in. Mm -hmm. So Christ is now our advocate in heaven, and we are now under the power of the Holy Spirit. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit, in one way or another, we are to be witnesses of Christ on earth. While in heaven, Christ advocates for our concerns with perfect wisdom and truth and love. When we stand gazing and wondering, the thoughts of our Master's second coming should quicken and awaken us. When we stand gazing and trembling, they should comfort and encourage us. I want and pray that our expectation of Christ coming again to be steadfast, mm -hmm. to be joyful, mm -hmm. to be wonderful, miraculous, splendid, mm -hmm. to be extraordinary, not ordinary, to be fantastic, to be marvelous, to be tremendous, to be excellent, to be perfect. Mm -hmm. In other words, to be super. Amen. Be careful what you call super. Mm -hmm. Be careful of when you use that word, that you're using it in the way that it truly should be used to describe a God who loves us beyond where we are able to think or imagine mm -hmm. and to share a love that is beyond compare. That's is soon. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who are our God. Yes. Amen. 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 we worship a super God. Yes. Let's stand, please, and sing the first, the third, and the fourth stanza of our Jordan's Story Face. I stand, hymn number 724. First, third, and last. All the choir, in case you're not familiar with it.